Have you ever wondered what the absolute best cybersecurity certification is for your career? Have you ever wondered what the overall value of certifications is in the grand scheme of things? Well, in this video, I'm gonna break these questions down. But first, welcome to the channel or welcome back. My name is John Good, and on this channel, we talk all about cybersecurity. If you enjoy the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to check out the description for more training and resources. All right, let's do this. If you've ever watched any of my videos or even YouTube videos in general about certifications, then you know that there's a ton of them that you can add to your resume for various subjects. From basic security knowledge certifications like the Security Plus from CompTIA, the penetration testing for those hackers out there like the OSCP, all the way to security management with the CISSP. The question that always comes up from aspiring professionals and students all the way up to seasoned veterans that are looking to take their career to the next level is what's the best cybersecurity certification to get and how valuable is that certification in the market? Well, first I wanna step back for a few minutes to talk about something that can actually be a pretty difficult concept to grasp for most people because we tend to look at things with tunnel vision when it comes to our careers. This is what I like to call a cybersecurity career continuum. First of all, with the continuum, it all comes down to perspective where adjacent steps or back-to-back -back steps like year to year might not matter, but the beginning and the end are extremely different. For example, you and I will most likely see the career path of a CISO or a chief information security officer very differently. You might see what seems to be a very coherent and straight line progression path that led them to that position of a CISO. I might see the exact same person, but then I see the trial and errors of different roles and the development of specific skills. Again, the point is that the in-between steps like year to year aren't drastically different. However, the beginning and the end are clearly different. When we take this idea and we translate it into your career, you must understand that as things continue to evolve in cybersecurity, your path is very likely to have twists and turns getting you to your end goal in say 20 or 30 years if you're on the younger side. Today, you might enjoy penetration testing, but in five years, you might enjoy project management. If you don't remain flexible in your approach, you're likely gonna become as obsolete as Windows XP. Now let's look at the value of certifications over a career. And as you can see here on the screen, I have a graphical representation of this. But when you start out in your career, certifications are at an all-time high importance. Typically, more certifications are better, but every single certification matters in setting you apart from your peers. A Network Plus might be the difference between you actually getting a job versus not even getting hired. As you progress over time, certifications begin to be less important because you have more experience and that allows you to take on more responsibilities. For example, maybe you have 10 years of experience and you get a management job and that employer only cares about you having a CISP because you aren't gonna be the one that's configuring firewalls or performing penetration tests. Now to clarify, with technical positions, your certifications are still gonna matter, especially if they're for vendors like Cisco or AWS and so on, but you become much more focused on specifics instead of needing to cast that wide net like you do when you first start out. Now turning to the diagram that we have on the screen here, you can see that at zero years of experience, certifications are extremely important. And then as you get more experience, they become less and less important until you get to say like 30 years or more of experience. And then certifications really don't mean anything because you have so much experience and so much time in positions with information security and cybersecurity that you can handle pretty much any situation. Now, I don't want you to necessarily burn these numbers into your head, but keep in mind, this is a graphical representation of the value of certifications over your career. Throughout your career, I want you to consider these factors to help you decide what's gonna be the most valuable certification for your career at the current moment or in the future. So compliance requirements. For example, the DOD 8570 or the 8140 are compliance mandates that require you to hold certain certifications if you wanna do business with the US military. Contract requirements. These might include a specific certification to show competency in a certain subject. The contract might even say that you have to have something like a CCIE and security as an example. Customer requirements. These might be formal in a contract, but they might also be informal with a memorandum of understanding saying that you're going to maintain a certain certification. If you work at a consultant company, you might have customers that actually want you to have certain certifications in order to be hired. I hope you're enjoying the content so far. If you are, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you think of any questions, leave them in the comments section below. Also make sure to check out the description for more training and resources. All right, let's get back to the content. Employer requirements. These might be created by management because they believe that a certain certification is valuable. 
prospective employer requirements. These come into play if you're gonna be looking for another job. A good way to find this information is to look at job postings from companies. Increasing value in areas that your team doesn't have. These can be useful to build your skills and make you more desirable, both internally and externally. Okay, now I wanna look at a couple of job postings so that you can kind of see the evolution over a career. So the very first job that I've brought up is a cybersecurity analyst one, and this can really be any entry level cybersecurity job, but this is just the one that came up. So if we go ahead and we scroll down here, we're gonna see that this is really focused on the actual tasks that a regular cybersecurity kind of job would do. So complete small security review projects and cybersecurity service requests, engage with security architecture and engineering teams, work with scrum masters, decide what projects or service requests will be assigned to a team member. And so it looks like this has a little bit of leadership responsibilities that you could do. Obviously, it's not a manager type role, but that's always good to have. And then if we look at the required education and experience, we see a bachelor's degree, educational experience working with Windows and Linux operating systems, educational experience working with cloud technologies, educational experience working with networks. And then we'll see some certifications listed as well. And then you can see one to three years of experience. Now, with these jobs, the thing that you have to keep in mind is that in general, the bar to entry in this kind of job is pretty low, right? So one to three years, that's not that much. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to fall into that category. So a lot of people are going to either minimally qualify or be fully qualified for this kind of job. So it's really important that you're able to stand out from those other candidates if you want this job. The next job is a manager of information security job. And if we scroll down here, we're gonna to start to see more of leadership responsibilities. So establishing baseline reporting metrics, developing systems and processes for monitoring, detecting, and alerting on anomalous behavior within GOAT group environments, analyze known and emerging threats, create, communicate, and maintain security policies and standards, collaborate with key stakeholders and partners. The idea here is that you're not necessarily going to be a hands-on person anymore in a lot of managerial type of jobs. So you're not necessarily going to need to have that configuration ability. You're gonna to need to be able to direct other people in what they're going to do. And if we scroll down here, we start to see different compliance requirements, and that's very in line with that type of job. Five years of hands-on management experience. Now, something else that I wanna point out too is depending on the company, some companies with manager jobs, they will have more hands-on requirements. Especially in smaller companies, you might have to do some hands-on things because there's just not enough budget or enough headcount allotted to that department or that team. So keep that in mind. And then we have certifications like the CISSP, the CISM, the CISA, and a few others. So again, this is a manager of information security job. And the last role is a director of information security. Now this is going to be very detached from the actual operational aspects of information security or cybersecurity. If we go ahead and we scroll down here, assess a security risk, leads execution of strategic security plans, develops and communicates security strategy roadmap. And you can see, these are much more leadership tasks than we saw in either of the positions before. But again, this is a director role. So this is going to be very focused on a lot of those leadership capabilities. Somebody in a director role is gonna have quite a bit of experience. And so there's going to be less competition for these kind of roles but they're really expecting somebody who has been battle tested and really knows how to run a department. If we keep scrolling down here, we can see experience five plus years managing and or directing an IT security operations. We see a few certifications. So the CISSP or the CISM, those are pretty common. We see a master's preferred. That's pretty typical with a lot of these high level jobs. You'll see in these entry level jobs like the cybersecurity analyst one, where maybe a degree is preferred, but it's not necessarily required. 
And again, you have to really stand out from the competition if you want that kind of job. When you start getting into these higher level jobs, there's much more pay at risk. There's much more responsibility in this kind of role. So they're going to require quite a bit more as far as degrees and really experience. Question of the day, which cybersecurity certification do you think is most valuable in your career right now? Let me know down in the comment section below. So with all that being said, which certification is the most valuable? There is no true answer because everybody's at a different point in their career and has different career objectives. Your career objectives might make the OSAP the most valuable or maybe the CISSP. Remain flexible and always be willing to adapt. Remember, the cybersecurity career continuum is a forever evolving process that has to be adjusted based on your career. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more training and resources, and I'll see you next time.